Usually, she loved the springtime. But now, the hot midday sun was burning at her skin as she sat outside of the butcher's shop. She still had the taste of the leftover scraps of meat that she'd not exactly stolen, but had taken from out of the bin. It had a taste of iron and mould and rot. She wished that she could have eaten good food, but after five years of being a pickpocket on the streets of Paris, she knew that she was lucky to get anything to eat, rotten, mouldy, old or thrown away or not. She pulled her thick, long, black curly hair away from her eyes. Some people said that when you looked into her eyes it was difficult to see anything. They were so dark. But she'd made a living, if you could call this a living, on the streets of Paris here in 1890. But her eyes were aching, aching from the dust and the grime and the tiredness of having to eat leftover scraps. Everything to her was an adventure. Life was an adventure. Her mother had died five years before, and now her mother had become a far distant memory. On her back, she had a dress. It was short-sleeved, it was frilly and threadbare, and had once been a beautiful dress. But now it was getting very old and tired and dirty. She tried her best to brush down at the short sleeves with her small, thick, stubby fingers. But it didn't make any difference. She might have had small, stubby fingers, but they were very quick when it came to taking things out of other people's pockets. She never cared for a moment how they would feel when they found that something had gone because she really didn't have anything herself. All she did have was a broken wooden hoop and a diary. A diary that she couldn't read. She didn't recognise some of the letters of her own name, but for five years she had struggled just to make ends meet. On the Seine, the wooden boats were making the waves crash uh, against the banks and the water was going and now she was sitting and it was almost as if the waves on the Seine were mirrored by the waves of the busy people going past her upon the street. On her feet she had dainty shoes. She loved to polish them. There was something that reminded her of her mother for her mother was nothing more than a distant memory, a breath upon her cheek, a smile, a sound, a thought. But as she looked up from the dusty pavement outside of the butcher's shop, she looked and saw that there was a billboard. She couldn't read it, but she could see that there was uh, going to be a, a boat trip, a boat trip on the scene. She pushed the few centimes that she had inside of her pocket, beside her mother's diary, and wondered if she could go on that trip. It would be an adventure. But it was as she looked up, she could see someone. It wasn't a mother, but it was like someone who looked like her mother, and perhaps they'd been friends. She had no recollection of her mother at all, and she jumped to her feet, and she was unsure whether to stop this woman for this woman's dress was very like hers but this woman's dress was not threadbare it wasn't careworn like her dress and she, all she wanted to do was ask if she knew her mother if the dress was the same then perhaps they knew the same tailor the same dressmaker and as she got closer her heart her heart was heavy in her chest and she couldn't bring herself to ask, but she could bring herself to take her thick stubby fingers, place them inside of this woman's pocket, and she took out a checkbook. A checkbook that she'd pickpocketed. A checkbook that would make her richer than she'd ever been in all of her life. No more of having to eat scraps outside of a butcher's shop. She looked at it. She licked at her lips to think that this would make her rich. Oh, 
Maman. And she reached for the diary, but the diary had gone. As she'd been reaching to take this woman's checkbook, then perhaps someone had pickpocketed her. And for once in her life, she knew what it felt like to have something stolen from her. There was an agony inside of her heart. An agony for the fact that she'd lost this diary, even though she couldn't read it. But an agony for all of the things that she'd stolen. She was devastated. Her heart, still like a stone, felt now as if it was broken into tiny pieces. She rested her back against the Arc de Triomphe and the sun gleamed off the stone top. It was like a huge, calming elephant about her. She was now rich, but she wished that she could have a mother there. She wishes that she could have had her mother's diary there. She wishes, with regret, for all of the stealing that she'd done. In her small hands, this crinkled piece of rough paper made no sense at all. It was covered with raised blurs, swirls and squiggles. She could only recognise the first letter of her own name, the letter N. Her aching dark black eyes scoured the confusing writing desperately to desperately discover an arched N like the great white stone elephant she rested her slouched thin body against now. The tired Parisian sunlight shone upon the smooth marble top of this triumphal archway. As warm tears of agony and guilt cascaded down her pale, scarred cheeks. With the back of her big hands, she rubbed each side of her dust-stained cheeks as the note de credit slipped from her small, stubby fingers and fell like a delicate white goose feather and was caught in the gushing wave of a, pas of a passing carriage. She spread her fingers and arms in front of her as the air brushed through her thick, long, curly hair as she chased after this stolen piece of paper that could change her life forever. <laughs> 